Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about a rare and fun Victorinox Wenger or Wenger model of Swiss Army knife. And this is the Wenger Spotlight with the scissors. The Wenger Spotlight has several different features, which is quite nice. It has a long blade, a small nail file, and a scissors in this variant, a can opener, and also a slotted screwdriver, as well as a small awl and a corkscrew. The scale tools inside of it are going to be a toothpick and a tweezer. Now the spotlight runs on two quad A batteries and you can run either alkaline or nickel metal hydride in there and it features an incandescent bulb a T at 1.275 or 1 and 3 quarters fitting. Here on the table we can see the spotlight it's quite small. It's an 85 millimeter platform and it's a nice decent size for a pocket carry although it's a little bit wide. It's similar to a couple other models out there. I think the Traveler is one of them and this particular model did come with a pair of scissors. There's a model of Spotlight that doesn't have the scissors so there's two different types of models. It's got a nice scale alignment here. We have the logo here. So I got this off of eBay for a fairly good price about $90 or so when this goes for a little bit more on, on the aftermarket. It's quite rare and I'm a big fan of multi-tools with lights built into them. I've always got to kind of compare and contrast and see what the best light is because I like flashlights and I like multi-tools. So it's natural I went with this. So let's begin with the tools here. We have the outside file here for the nail and the little cuticle cleaner if you want to call it that or the nail cleaner if you want or the scraping bit. And then we have the main pin blade and these are non-locking tools. So here's our blade here with the Wenger logo on it and the embossing stamp on here with the crossbow. And let's go ahead and grab the scissors, which is a Wenger or Wenger design and it has a lever here. As you can see, unlike a smaller spring that the typical Swiss Army Victorinox knives would have. And if we notice on the scissors, it has sort of a, I guess, kind of a textured grip here, teeth, if you will. So I suppose it's for grabbing more uh, cloth material and stuff like that for cutting that type of material. The scissors work very well, very fine. So very responsive and they snap into place pretty well. And then in the center, we have our light here, the spotlight. And the way that this opens up is that there's a tweezer in the back and you slip it in this hole here and you push in and this will come out. So, but the activation of the light is this little button on the bottom here. And we'll go ahead and do that. It's an incandescent bulb, so you're not going to see a whole lot of brightness out of it. And once again, it's kind of hard to find a small enough LED that runs on about three volts that fits this typical size or the tubing size, if you will, for this. So it's kind of hard to find an aftermarket non incandescent bulb type of emitter, if you will. But let's go ahead and take it apart and look at it. So you push that in and simply undo the latch here. You, you got to be careful with these latches. You don't want to break these pieces here. And we have two quad A batteries inside of there. They're rechargeable and and that is our current configuration and if you want to push out the bulb you simply take a rounded item and push the bulb back while this is empty and this should come out of the slot let's go ahead and put that back together and once again you want to be kind of be real careful about putting this back together you want to force it you might break those plastic pieces moving along we have the can opener and uh, this one's a Wenger design so there's no combo tool on it it's just a strict can opener I do suppose you might be able to lift a bottle cap with that potentially but probably not and then we have our slotted screwdriver here with the true bottle cap lifter here so this is typical uh, like you would find most generally on some Swiss Army types but this one doesn't have a 90 degree side to it it's just a straight in line bottle cap lifter 
and slotted screwdriver and wire bender this little slot here so then on the back side we have this i guess you call an awl or some kind of poker it doesn't have any sharp edges to it and there's no sawing eyelet on it and then we have the traditional corkscrew and important to note in this type of scale we don't have a slot for the metal pin to go into we've already seen the pair of tweezers that i pulled out before but we also have a nice pair of or not pair but a small toothpick here and then we have the key ring i happen to like these key rings a little bit better kind of makes sense with the small chain here and that is the tool in the nutshell so let's go ahead and get some night shots or rather beam shots on the desk here with some measurements to see how powerful the incandescent bulb is with Nikomoto hydride batteries okay we're back we're shooting an aperture of 3.5 iso is at 200 very low and we have white balance of 5000k on a panasonic gh4 with a 14 to 42 millimeter lens shooting at approximately 23.976 frames per second on the right here you can kind of see the app which is using the Opal Lightmaster Pro 2 and we're measuring lux output and the CCT or the color core te temperature and we're going to go ahead and try to get a measurement here we do have some light bleed over from the shades so I do apologize about four lux into the light but it's not affecting the uh, color rendering so let's go ahead and shine the light into the module here the full brightness we're getting at about roughly minus four lux I want to say about 80 or 70, 70 lux or so. Yeah, just about. We're about maybe a foot off the table. So it's approximately 70 lux, and CCT is about 3,800, as we saw. So let's look at the beam here and go ahead and remove this off the table. So you kind of see how this kind of holds up to a real world practicality. So that is about on an angle from about two to three inches away and let's bring it up towards the camera we're not going to see a whole big difference here but you can kind of see the artifacts in the lens here this is not made to be a, a heavy duration use type of light it's really made for seeing the keyhole of your car or something very up close so it's not made for uh, a search and rescue light if you will but this is close to the table here and we're going to go ahead and up the ISO on the camera in a moment here, just so we can see uh, the difference that ISO makes when it comes to looking at flashlights in the dark. Okay, we're back with the ISO at 6400, which is the top end for the GH4. So you see a lot of noise here. You can see the mat and some of the light bleed through from the, uh, the window, unfortunately. So we don't get an exact clear representation of the light, but you can get an idea with the ISO differences make for a camera and looking at flashlight reviews so let's go ahead again and show the light beam here this is about a foot off the table so we can see a little bit brighter obviously now and you can kind of see the pattern there on the umbro logo if we go close in you can see the tight hot spot there in the center if we go further up it's more dispersed it's not really a thrower type of light again the bulb has a reflector inside of it but it's not a lens reflector so there's no real optic inside of there just the bulb itself so it's not going to be anything bright and once again this is not for long range use or for emergency use it's only for convenience use i would say and you can get varying degrees of the light based on how much you press on the spotlight here if you press a little bit you get a little bit of a lower glow, but if you press harder, you get a brighter light. So you increase the contact surface area here. Overall, it's a decent light to use in the pitch black dark. It will work very well for that. If, you're, if you've got no light source, this is an excellent light source for up close tasks if you need temporary light. So on the table, we have a comparison of some of the more recent light modules that are out in the market. From left to right, we have the spotlight here. The Huntsman light with the version 2 LED module and a custom made Swiss Army knife that is the Cyberchamp light with the clear housing module, which is the latest version 3 module for the light series of Swiss Army knives. The main difference between 
the light modules is that this has a button for temporary on and off momentary. This one can do the same thing, but you can also pull back the slide and it can stay on without having to have someone or something pushing down on the switch, which is quite nice. The other thing is obviously the battery format. This uses two CR1225 batteries, whereas the spotlight uses two quad batteries. So quad A batteries to be more specific. But you can kind of see the comparison. The most comparable one would be to the Huntsman Light here. And this is the second version of the Huntsman Light. This is the third version that's out with the clear module. And as you can see, the Huntsman Light has a fair bit more of tools and layers in it. And it does include a plus scale, which has the pen inside of it as well, as you can see. So we don't have that with the Wenger. And plus these are outside accessible as opposed to the inside accessible tools. So they reversed it. So that's a fair bit of comparison for the light module, specifically with the Wenger Spotlight. Now, would I recommend this to anybody who's looking to get a multi-tool with the light on it? Probably not, because the incandescent bulb is a T1 and 3 quarters or 1.75 module, meaning you'll have to buy a special uh, miniature or sub-miniature bulb that fits in there. And it does require specialized batteries, which are common. Uh, I do have those rechargeable, so you can buy rechargeable batteries, which is quite nice for this module if you use it a lot. But the incandescent bulb won't last as long as, say, an LED. And the the closest LED I could find that might fit into it is a 6-volt LED. And I think this runs on about about 3 volts or so, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. I can probably put up a literature pamphlet, and you can check it out in the image there and see the uh, specifications for yourself. But overall, it's going to be kind of difficult to replace the incandescent bulb in here to make this more modernized, if you will. The incandescent bulb does a good job for uh, close-up work, and if you're in pitch black dark, it's fine if you don't have to consistently press on the switch. And that's the other thing I would say is that if this had another option where it would be not just a press on, but a slide kind of on option, that would be good. But overall, it's a fun collector's item, and I'm into flashlights, and that's why I got it. It's a fun tool to have, and it's something to talk about because there's not too many name brand companies that make light multi tools with lights in it or you know that kind of thing so and that's all i have to say about the wenger spotlight let me know what you guys think if you have one if, what you use it for or what you want to use it for and thank you for watching enjoy your day